It's Wednesday, so that means it's time for Crew Talk. Welcome to Crew Talk, brought to you by Shoots.Video. Today, we have a very large panel with us, and we are going to be talking about writing corporate video scripts. So like I said, we have a lot of experts in the field with us today, and I have a lot of questions. So we're going to get to those in a second, but hello to my panel. Thank you for being here today. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you. I think you're all pretty much on the West Coast. So hello from um, Orlando, Florida, where it's evening here. But um, <laughs> thank you for being with me today. And like I said, I do have lots of questions I'm going to get to. But for our audience members who are watching, any questions you have, you can drop them into our chat box. And I will get to those um, towards the end of our session today. So I'm just going to dive right in today, um, get into all my questions. So what is a script writer and why is it so important in video production? And um, anyone can answer this. You can raise your hand or you just kind of answer however you want. Anyone can go for it. But don't all go at once, please. Avoid. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, why don't you take this first one? Oh, thank you so much. That's sure. very, very. Well, I, I think it's pretty self-evident. Scriptwriter writes the script is the most basic thing you can say about it. But for corporate video, it's, at least in my experience, it's been a different sort of animal than, say, even doing a, a product uh, video for, you know, when you're trying to do a branding exercise in that. Uh, corporate, uh, script writing for corporate videos is basically what you're trying to do is take a, a, a preset agenda and trying to turn it into something that people would actually want to pay attention to. And you have the challenge, I think, in corporate video is that unlike, say, a brand manager for a product or a service or whatever, they're usually, shall I say, a little bit more uptight about what you're saying and how you're saying it. Because they almost want it to be like, a, a, you know, a mantra of some sort, rather than thinking about gee, is anybody really going to want to look at this and even remember what's being said? So I think that's pretty what the difference is. So you're kind of an interpreter of this corporate mission statement yeah. and uh, turning it into something usable. Does anyone want to piggyback on that? What Mike said, yeah, that's, uh, I, I think so. I think that's, I think that's really well said. I think, I think one of the, the challenges, which I'm sure you'll get into is, and part of what a script is, is trying to distill the voice of the company and the product or the product and, and trying to do that visually. Okay, cool. I think um, one thing, cause I've had this discussion before um, and just kind of generally why I have a writer for this um, is it, like a lot of, a lot of clients just don't even think about that. Like, Oh, you know, we have all this information like on our, uh, on our website and the about us, we just put that, as the script and, and that'll be our video, but like, they don't even realize that like, like, Oh, there's a lot more that goes into that. Plus like when you're reading something, it's a lot different than when you hear it out loud. Like you need to kind of to condense stuff and, and simplify it and make it interesting for the audience. Um, and it's one of those things where they don't even think about it. And then like when they, when they finally see the product or if they try to write it themselves, then they'll be like, Oh, you were right. Yeah. This, this isn't my job. <laughs> Terry, I'm going to throw uh, the second question. Well, I think in addition to that, Sarah, those are all um, really important points about corporate videos. But corporations usually have more money to spend on a production. And because of that, it's really important when you have a bigger crew or a more expensive crew and cameras or set to really have the, the script as tight as you can. And that's one really important reason to bring in someone who can nail it down or be on set and adjust as things need to be, you know, done as you're filming. And Terry, what would your answer be to how is writing traditional marketing copy different or the same as digital and social media copy? Well, uh, I don't do as much digital and social media, so I may not be the best person to answer that. But I think writing good copy is across the board important and uh, getting someone's attention quickly is what you're trying to do in both in both of those. That would be my answer. Does anyone else want to jump in? And just to add to that, that's, uh, I was going to say basically the same thing, but 
um, for both corporate video and digital social media stuff. <clears throat> I think what's important is the hook and all, like, like Terry said, again, getting, getting that attention really quickly, which is what corporate clients generally don't think about. They're like, it's all about us and our image and our brand. And literally nobody cares. And I tell them, like, nobody cares about you. They want to know what's in this for me. So you have to hook them. And when I write these things, it's always a sales in my head. It's a, I'm always selling. <clears throat> so I'm writing a script that's going to help them present their brand and whatnot that hooks the buyer, but in a sales way where you're giving something to the, to the person who's watching uh, that makes them want to either click on, you know, learn more or find out more about the, the brand itself or some other action as opposed to just a commercial of like uh, like Scott said in about us page which nobody is going to pay attention to so I would just add that that's a little bit of a difference where you really want to sell your client and they, they might not always understand that they're just like well, we've got a web page we've got <clears throat> branding just use that it's like you need a little bit more or else why, what, what is the point of this video in the first place? What was your goal with this? You already have an about us page to just send people to your about us page. You want an animated about us page? doesn't make any sense there. Long winded, I know. No, that's great. That's the more details, the better. Does anyone else want to jump on? If not, we can move on. What's anyone? one of the, what's one of the most important elements a script writer can bring to a project other than the writing skill? Enthusiasm, passion, there's so many things. So Creativity. Many things. Yeah. yeah. I think the, uh, another thing, I was, I was trying to think about uh, the answer to this, uh, flexibility. Uh, yeah. Good one, yeah. Like with any, any writing uh, it, in whatever medium, uh, getting notes sucks most of the time, uh, because it's like, you didn't do it right. Um, but especially with this one, when you're trying to please the client, uh, yeah. you have to be flexible to everything. And uh, even, you know, uh, the when you think you have your, your final draft in, and they would say, you know, we, we, we want this, uh, being able to just change it right away, or uh, changing it, changing it in a way where you're still um, getting that note across, but knowing that it's still going to work. That's good. Yeah. And I think what Scott says is also learn how to bill for when that flexibility stretches <laughs> the original terms of your deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's another factor that I always think of, and that's and you have to have intuition. Yeah. Unless you're dealing with, say, the head of the corporation, you're dealing with somebody whose butt is on the line if it doesn't turn out right or it doesn't fulfill the vision of the head guy. So it, the intuition has to come in. It's almost like a therapeutic thing of like, back in the day that all says soon uh, had a tagline that says, uh, if you look good, we feel good. And it's always the way I approach it in anything, whether it's advertising. If I make that person who's the decision maker look good, then ultimately to your point about the billing, I'm gonna feel good. So it's almost, it's not really hand holding, but just picking up on what their fears are in regards to the project that they're helming and try to get behind that and kind of go, okay, I, I, you're not saying it to me, but I got, I got an instinct here that if we do this, you're, you know, you're going to get in trouble for it or anything like that. So this is, that's another factor that's probably because we have all been in this business for a while. We just do naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. Love that. That's great advice. Yeah. And um, so What's what's the most important thing needed before writing a script? Tequila. <laughs> I'm gonna say I go just from experience of not doing this and the horror that has occurred the first couple of scripts is get everything fleshed out <clears throat> like at a granular level from the beginning. So what's their goal with this video is the first thing. It's like, what, what is the point of this video? Why are you spending money? Why are you hiring? It's to really get their um, vision. And then you can use, like Mike said, your intuition to figure out, to steer this conversation to really deliver what is going to help the most. 
again, the sales thing. What's going to provoke action yeah. from, from the person who's reading? So a very, very thorough intake of like, you know, what's your budget like? What's your goal? Um, is there going to be animation? Uh, have, have you budgeted for that? You know, how much of a budget, how much animation are we doing? Uh, is there going to be, a, a, you know, actors as opposed to animation? If so, are you going union? Not like all these things have to be known up front because or else, number one, you're going to deliver a script which you're going to have to rewrite extensively uh, and waste, waste your time. And you likely will not be able to build them for your errors, uh, not getting you know, the, the ideas all, all settled first. And, uh, and number two, you're, going to, you're just going to have um, a lot of back and forth with the customer and revision after revision. And it just gets frustrating. So if you, if you do a very thorough, I mean, I have a, a spreadsheet that I use. Here's all the points that I'm going to need in order to, to even produce a script. And yes, I do take a deposit <laughs> up front. And if there's any changes past what we agreed to here, it's going to be more. So I just kind of like set the big picture from the beginning. And that requires me to find out as much about the client and their project as possible. So just be thorough, I guess is what I would sum that up as. I also think a critical element is knowing who the audience is, because I think everything funnels down to that. And I think, I think your narrative through line, whatever that will be, funnels down to that. So I, I think that's a critical element in, in conjunction, certainly with what Willie said. Definitely. Now, the difference I see in a corporate video versus doing a film or a documentary is you have an extra layer you have the corporation between you and the audience and you have to please them first before you please the audience. So that adds a little, another layer of, you could yeah. look at it as difficulty, but also, uh, um, you know, what I do is I start like you, Willie, I start with the goal, with the theme and everything is driven through that. If I ever get stuck in a production, I go back to that goal and it clarifies it. Does it meet that? So I kind of, it's like an, an inverted pyramid. You start with the big and then you go down and you narrow it till you get the really hook or key of the story. And once you get that, it, it almost seems to write itself, at least for me. That's, yeah. that's how I do it. And quickly, somebody in the audience just wanted to, uh, Willie, for you to elaborate on the spreadsheet you use that you mentioned oh okay so it's just basically from experience <laughs> some good some bad it's like what have i what have i screwed up on and didn't ask and i couldn't bill for later <laughs> basically what drove this is i didn't ask uh you know for for their for their budget right away so i overwrote you know i wrote too, too many scenes or something like that and that came back to, to kick me in the butt so just basically <clears throat> imagine what you're going to need Put yourself in the place of a director. Like the guy was going to actually be sitting with the actors or, or the animator and shooting. And think about all the things that that encompasses and ask the questions that you as a scriptwriter can fill in everything that's going to be needed on that set. So what does that mean? I don't mean like what's the catering budget or what's crafty, you know, things like that. But I mean, okay, how many people are going to be involved in this production as far as talent? How many actors? Um, do you want, is it going to be um, a voiceover? Is it going to be on screen? So all these kind of things, which gets the person to think about really what they want, because in general, they don't know what they want in the beginning. So you guide them through this interview process. And my spreadsheet is more or less, uh, see, okay, what's your overall goal? Like John said before, who's, who's a target audience? What's your budget? And a lot of times they don't want to answer that, but you need to know it or else you're going to overwrite or underwrite, right? Sure. Uh, they were thinking of going to Disney to shoot and you're writing for, you know, um, somebody's backyard. You know what I mean? So you got you to kind of know what they're, how much they're willing to invest. Um, is it going to be a voiceover a narration? Is it going to be actors on screen? Um, animation? Do they envision animation? If, if animation, who's going to do the animation? Are they going to outsource it? Is it going to be in-house? Do they need a referral? So all these kind of things is just a basic customer intake that I've, you know, I've, I've got it. I keep adding to it. It's not through it's not, experience, it's right? Through experience mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and it's fluid. So I don't ask these questions to every single project because some of them are irrelevant. 
So, you know, do a Google uh, sheet and start writing what you think you need to ask somebody and it, it builds itself. I think I think another thing, it, what Willie's talking about is because I come from the ad agency side in doing corporate videos for use, typically in the past, they're an, a client of the agency, therefore they wanted a corporate video. But now that I've been uh, an independent for like two, two get, decades now, sometimes they come in direct, you know, or sometimes they'll contact a production company like Blair and Blair will outsource to people like me and uh, our good friend for some of us, Doug Morris. Um, so the basic thing that that I always find two things is that it's really good to have a partner, a creative partner. And typically for me, it's with an art director that I know that I'll kind of go, hey, I got this gig, it's corporate video, are you interested? We'll concept together, and try to come up with like uh, Terry was talking about that hook, you know, through the prism of whatever their brand image is. The, the other thing is that I always find really important. There's a problem here. Otherwise, why would they be, they wouldn't be doing a video if there wasn't a problem to solve. And sometimes it takes asking the question in a lot of different ways, but getting them to come really nail it down. What is it, what's wrong that this thing can fix? And that always gives me a good idea how to approach it just from a creative point of view, trying to come up with that, that idea that's going to be the umbrella idea through the whole thing. Um, and the other thing is that uh, because of my, coming into brandy when it first got, I hate using the word now, but the one thing that uh, I always find uh, is that, and I put it in my own creative briefs or like Willie's spreadsheet, I always, I have to find that reason to believe. It's like that old Tim Harden song. I cried when they lied, but still I look for a reason to believe. Well, consumers especially of any type, whether they're other corporations, B2B or consumers, they're so used to being lied to all the time by everybody. So it's really important to me to find a reason to believe, and it has to be so truthful, it can't be impeached in its truthfulness. And that's basically like a center point for everything and try to build off of that, you know? Okay. Awesome. Should you include camera direction and other explicit directions such as um, how animation should look? Oh yeah, because cameramen don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Well, I want to know how John Kelly got such good lighting in his office there. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm under a crappy skylight here. And look at him. He, he, look, he looks like a, a high production value right there. Yeah, yeah but yours, yours has more of that paranormal video feel. So yeah, it that, does. That's on appeal yeah. too. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be on with the voodoo doctor in a little bit after right. this. So. Uh, camera directions, was that, was, was that the... Uh, uh, my, yeah. In my experience is, is no, except if you're really trying to make a specific point, uh, I, you know, boy, we really need a drone for this to capture this particular shot. But uh, most, as Michael probably tell you, most directors don't like it if they get inundated with, with camera directions because they've already got a visual grammar in their head of how they want to shoot it. So well, my experience is to do it. So, so John and uh, Sarah, this kind of keys into another question you guys were talking about, which is, uh, storyboarding because storyboarding a script can have camera direction but again in my case I usually work with an art director who does a rough storyboard so that we can sit down yes. with a production company and go through it but maybe that's another thing to weave that everybody can talk about here Willie do, you, Willie do you do storyboards I do yeah yeah, yeah. and um, also I, I guess I'm a, I'm a counterpoint to you guys I'm not putting direction I mean I do put I guess that I've, I've worked with a lot of animations, so I do sure. put a lot of direction as to where I want the things to fly in. And sure. Not. Um, yeah, I do storyboards, and those are pretty explicit as far as right. where I want yeah. things to go. Um, and I think, in my case, if it's corporate, um, and I don't ha have luxury, or I haven't had the luxury of working with a specific art director like Mike, I'm basically doing everything. So they want that final product that shows everything so they can just run with it. Yeah. Is it common to be asked to produce storyboards? For me, 25%, 30% of the time. It's not, it's not always. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it, it it's depended. Uh, I think not necessarily the client has asked me for it, but the the companies that I've been hired through mm -hmm. are usually like we're going to make a storyboard so uh talk with the storyboard artist about this or whatever um yeah. and sometimes they want me to to include in the script what is going to be in the storyboard and sometimes not 
There so. have been times, there have been times when I have done them and times when I haven't. And usually the times when I haven't uh, for the, some of the time is when I am also directing it because I know in my head what I'm doing. But even if I am directing it, sometimes they will ask for a storyboard. So, you know, they're pretty easy to do. Uh, so it depends on how much detail they want. So, yeah, better to I have it. I think when presenting an idea to a client, uh, it's a lot of times good to let them see exactly what you are talking about. Uh, Cause I've run into a lot of times that clients uh, are very literal in, in what they're reading on the page. And they're like, I, but the, the, the words that are here aren't in a video form. What does this mean? And it's like, yeah, that's a script. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll actually be filming it and yeah. then it'll be on a screen. Uh, and they're like, I, what, what are you talking about? Uh, so sometimes you have to like, kind of like lead them a little more and then other times you don't. And another thing that, uh, Scott, that brought up, uh, an idea is I had a client who I did a storyboard for who wanted a particular scene in a restaurant and we drew it kind of based on what he initially said. And when he saw the storyboard, he said, ah, I want it to be really diverse in this section and add more, you know, and that we wouldn't have known without the storyboard and we would have gotten the, you know, people. And so it saved a lot of time and money. So. What kind of formatting do you use for script writing and what software do you use? I'll go first. Okay. I used to use, uh, I tried to use, sorry, I tried to use Celtic before for the two column. Now I just use Microsoft Word. It's just easy for me to go boop, 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 boop. And for storyboards, I do have uh, Toon Boom storyboard. So that's what I use. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I use Word. Um, it's funny, the whole formatting question is interesting to me because in my experience, I find um, that the people that hire, maybe the company, um, wants an, an, what they call, I guess, an AV, an audio visual with two columns, audio and video. Uh, for, a lot of, for a lot of people that, the, the end users that, that are using it, I find a screenplay format, they're able to visualize it more. And I think it's just the way the eyes go down the thing. So I've written in both formats, probably about 60, 40. Um, so it's, it's interesting to me that, that how they, it's just based on what they're used to, I think. But if that makes sense in the traditional screenplay format, as opposed to the audio visual. Yeah, I, I, um, Scott? yeah, let's see you, Scott. Oh, uh, I've, uh, I've done a lot of, uh, a lot of, the, the jobs that I've worked have been for other companies like Blair or whatever, and everybody seems to have a, a format that they use, and like a yeah. template. Um, so that's kind of what I've always gone off of. Like if I if I just had my way, I'd, I'd use Final Draft, which is what yep. I, I use to write my own yeah. stuff. But um, yeah. but yeah, it seems like, it seems like everybody is is submitting the stuff with with you know with the the logo on the top for their yeah. company. So that it's very official. Yeah, I find Word works perfectly, and uh, I usually just write it because the first pass usually I'll write it out just with a scene description, cut to you know this, cut to that. This happens. This person says this. This person says that. And then, as I said before, then I'll turn it over to my uh, art director partner and say, okay, here's our starting point. And usually that goes, that document turns into the storyboard. It just uh, gets reformatted into a storyboard with it, maybe a smaller description of the scene and whatever audio is happening in that. Okay, so what is the biggest mistake clients make utilizing a script and subsequent video or what they don't take advantage enough of in the medium? <sighs> John, I feel like I'm stressing you out with my question. No, it, well, okay, so that was my question. Um, He's watching a baseball game at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I, you know, it's funny, um, I, just because I've, I've had this, this conversation a lot, um, and to their credit, a lot of, a lot of clients ask, ask this, but I feel like a lot of people use a talking head in a visual medium. And unless, you're, unless your person is very dynamic, you know, such as yourself, Sarah, it, 
it, it's, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't take advantage of the visual medium. And, you know, there's very few CEOs that are, that are brilliant, strategic and a dynamic speaker. If you have one, you're lucky. But on the whole, it's, I just find that people don't take advantage of make, telling their story visually to, to that something that resonates that the audience take away with. They just, they will sit somebody down and say, well, we just want this person to get this information dump out. And it's like, that's not really taking advantage. You should give them a white paper if you're gonna do that. So I'm not opinionated about that at all, but I just wanted to get that across. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Got it. <laughs> I, I think uh, one, one mistake, if you want to call it a mistake, uh, it is that videos are too long. Um, I agree. Oh, yeah. the, nobody watches like a, a minute long video and thinks like this needed to be way longer. Uh, like, even if it's a if it's a corporate video and employees are watching it or um, or clients are watching it or something like quick is is going to be great get all that information out or or make several videos uh, yeah. that are all short on one subject and then they'll yeah. they'll watch the videos that they need to watch um, you don't need to have a five minute video that's an overview of your whole company um, nobody's going to watch that. Wholeheartedly agree. Willie? No, I was just going to say that this ties back to your earlier question of the difference between like a corporate script and digital and social. Really, digital and social, you even trimming that even more. Like yeah. think of like an Instagram story. You got like 15 seconds to sell this entire thing and make that impact. So if I were to take back my answer from before, <laughs> I'd say <laughs> for digital and social, you have to be even more... Um, on your toes as far as that hook in the first like second and then delivering that message and then ending with a bang. So just like condensing everything to like that much because in social people are just going mm -hmm. they got, got hooked them right away. And especially if it is on Instagram or Twitter or whatever or Facebook, uh, something that, that they're going to see because they're not going to be listening to it. So um, yeah. If, yeah. if they're scrolling through yeah. and it's uh, it, you just have a dialogue or whatever, nobody's going to want to watch it because yeah. it, they, the only times I've ever clicked on something to hear what it is, is because it's visually like, Oh, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the least satisfying aspect of corporate screenwriting? <laughs> I think if you come well, up with an idea, the, the <laughs> I, I think if you come up with an idea that you really feel passionate about, you can't be attached to it because sometimes they have something else in mind. And if you have to yeah. go with what they, and you do, if they're very adamant and you can give them good reasons, you know, here's why ABC, why I think it should be this way. But ultimately if they have, an idea in mind uh, and they are adamant about it and you have to do it that way. That's the least satisfying is when you're not allowed to really make it glow and shine like you could make it. That's, that's harder, but it's doable. You know, that's why they hire you. So. Yeah. I think to dovetail off of Terry, what she said similarly um, is having a really good idea that everybody agrees on at the top and then by the time the end product, everything has been watered down because there's been so many voices coming in and saying, no, let's take that out. Let's do that. Let's do that. And pretty soon you're going, this isn't what we originally wanted to do. And, and that's dissatisfying. But when, when, uh, when you, you start out a project and, you, and you're like, this is going to be great in my portfolio. I can't wait to, to share this with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, you're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Willie, what about you? I think uh, it's kind of the same thing where it's like you're you're getting this very dry. Like I've done some corporate videos on like <laughs> the most boring, dry subject, like a medical company that's just like, here's my plants and here's my people. Like, yeah. oh, this is so horrible. And you come up with them kind of like, hey, look, let's focus <laughs> on, on this really personal story and it's going to be great and people are going to be interested in it and then they get shut shot down. Uh, by the end of the thing and if you're just left with this corporate bland thing and you're like like scott says i disavow i was not involved in this thing at all. 
I, and I understand like, especially people that aren't necessarily, uh, creative thinking and, and it, and they are, somebody mentioned that like everybody's job is on the line. They, they don't, they don't want to get in trouble, yeah. uh, when it goes up the ladder. Um, so they don't want to take any risks. Um, and like, you know, we've all seen the last couple months, every commercial is using the same terms, the, uh, uh, yeah. We're in this the, yeah. And, and it's, it's like, you know, somebody was fighting to use something completely different, do some different type of commercial than all the commercials that everybody's been making right yeah. now. But everybody's like, ah, you know, let's just do this. Everybody, everybody knows these, these terms, the, uh, a new normal and, and, and all that. Let's just use those because they know what it means. Right. It's like, all right. Well, let's flip it. And what is the most satisfying aspect of corporate screenwriting? Script writing, script writing. Seeing the end product and seeing it be awesome. You're like, oh, crap. Like, again, with animation, I don't know what it's going to look like, really. Just like have an idea. <laughs> and then when it comes together, you're like, oh, my God, these guys are so talented. <laughs> it made it look great. My words, my vision has come to fruition, and it looks awesome. That's, that, for me, is the best part. And when it's, when it's even better than you all envisioned and it comes out just great, when there are some surprises which you're able to, you know, capture and put in there, um, that's very, very satisfying. And ultimately, when whoever is the end user for that, um, that uh, product, you know, when they buy more books, when they buy more cars, when they... Uh, take action or get the information that's been passed on. That's the ultimate um, satisfaction. And you don't see that right. you, unless they tell right. you about that, you know, right. sales right. went up 50% because of this thing, this uh, particular ad. Um, mm -hmm. So part of it is you just have to take satisfaction and you doing the best you could with what they gave you to work with. Yeah. No. Well said. I, uh, kind of the flip of, of, of what we were saying before, but like, I, I, there's sometimes when companies like have been doing the same thing over and over again, and you present them with a new idea that like, it might even be just like the first idea that you guys thought of and it's presented to them. And it's, it's so different that they're like in awe because it's, it's, it's amazing to them. It's like they, they just tasted ice cream for the first time and you're like, <laughs> Oh, cool. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So can you guys talk about what a creative brief is and what you would want to see in one? Anyone, anyone? I have no idea what that is. I don't use one. No clue. <laughs> All right. The, the creative brief, because I've been on both sides of it. Um, yeah. it it's yeah, take it away. <laughs> it's the uh, the information that like the client gives you, um, so that you have you know what uh, what they're trying to get across in in the video, um, who it's talking to. It's basically all the information that you need um, to create this video and get what their um, their vision is, uh, if they have a vision. Um, and I think the the important thing to get from that is kind of the tone of what they they want whether they want it to just be um informational uh so that you know we're we uh we're just trying to to um you know tell the board of directors what what this is or something or if it's to um their we're trying to sell these products to kids or we're, we're trying to like knowing exactly what the video is for basically Thank and you, you for giving that. that to the client, or that's for you? That would be for for us, I believe. Uh, my spreadsheet. Yeah. That's basically what it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Um, it's it's usually written out more in a um in a uh a document where uh with you know it, it's not just a checklist, but it's it, it, and it is for us, but it's also for, so like uh, if you work at an agency, um, the agency would make that to give to the client to tell them exactly what, uh, like, did we get all this correct? Is this what, what you wanted? Yeah. And then to give to the people that are to the creative team that is, uh, creating that project so that they have all the information as well. 
All right, cool. It was just a term well, that was foreign to me, but yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, already on it, Willie. You already, you yeah, already yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you decide who to target in your messaging? Well, they usually tell you. Yeah. So uh, that's that's pretty yeah, easy. They usually tell you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Sometimes they don't even know, though. That's what's interesting. Sometimes you ask them that question and they're like, well, the person watching the video. <laughs> so having to okay. explain to them, like, yeah, but who exactly are you speaking to? Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I agree with Scott. I'm getting like, who are you targeting? Like, who do you want to do something with this video? So, yeah. so then you kind of have to walk them through the steps of like who your audience is and what you right. want them to. Okay. So it's like, that, goes, that goes back process. to that earlier question. Right. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, so because you have to determine that before you can move forward. Okay. Um, Willie, I think earlier in one of our first or second questions, you mentioned a hook. And so if you could kind of, and anyone really, if you want to talk a little bit more about what a hook is and why that is so important. Uh, it's just what grabs the attention right off the bat. And for me, um, I guess the, the main component is emotion. So you need a, a hook that ties into the emotion really quick um for social media like what uh, what scott was was saying it's got to be visual the actual visual thing which hooks in the interest uh so you have to have emotion and also for me the hook also becomes kind of like the the thread line throughout the entire script so the hook relates to the rest of the script it's just that first impact statement this is my definition could be incorrect or correct. That first impact statement that emotionally hooks your um, audience member into what, uh, into the rest of the piece. So, I'm is a tagline a hook? Then, like the last thing you would hear or see, could that is that also considered a hook? In a tagline, like at the end. Yeah, the like a company's tagline. Would that? I wouldn't say necessarily. I would say it's more like the opener. Okay. Um, that, that opening, yeah, because if it's at the end. You've already lost it. Lost them. Okay. Okay. But, so it is. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. In the it, yeah, think about like, like, a, like a newspaper. Like all writers learn this. Like think about a newspaper um, mm-hmm. story. That hook is like that headline or that first little, that first sentence. And then you trim the, the the least important stuff. Like it's an inverted funnel. Like like uh, Terry was was referring to before uh, another concept. But it's like that first important impact statement. And then you kind of whittle it down and then, you know, as long as you get that, that hook in, they're going to read the rest of the newspaper column or they're going to watch your video. And, um, you know, that's, if you don't have that hook, that first bang, they're just going to keep scrolling by or click away or go leave the, the room to go get nachos. <laughs> that's my definition. Somebody might have a different definition. Yeah. Anyone can add on if you'd like. Anyone, anyone. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, yeah. Bueller, Bueller. I, it, it, I was thinking about that, like, now with, like, YouTube videos, they use almost, like, almost like a hook. They use, like, the, uh, the, the uh, yeah. still photo mm-hmm. that, like, sometimes doesn't have anything to do with the video, <laughs> but it right. makes people click. And I, right. I don't know if that relates to this at all, but it, it, it's what I was just thinking about. I, I would say absolutely. That's why I was talking about yeah. the visual thing. It's it's what triggers the brain to be interested and be like, I yeah. I need to see this. It's literally a hook. Like here I am. That is so true, though. It's all the YouTube videos. It's always somebody like that, and then yeah. you're, yeah. it's like watching like, like twenty feet. hamburgers, but it's like, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I totally know what you mean because I watch those videos. So, yeah, <laughs> I am that person who's clicking yeah. those videos. It works. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because like YouTube. And and videos like YouTube, I say YouTube because it's, it was kind of the first one, but like that it's changed the way that we've absorbed information. Like yeah. we, our, our attention span or most people's attention span is so small now, especially for stuff that when you're scrolling by, like you don't have time to, to sit through to see if you like it. Like, and like sometimes it's just the, pit, the, the front picture of it um, and that's it. That's all you get. 
Yeah, that is very true. Because sometimes you'll click on those and whatever that picture is, isn't even in that video. And you're like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. We're only judging a book by its cover now. (laughs) Yes. That hook. Um, Next question. Why do so many writers use metaphors in their copy? Because we were weaned on Ray Bradbury. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer to that question. Because I'm not sure that I that I I do that I've done that just a few times, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear the answer to this. I think it could relate to having a story, and when you're creating a story, you look for metaphors to relate yeah. it to something. That's how I would answer yeah. that. Um, so. Yeah, metaphors create strong imagery. I think you know they're. And to enhance the visual, I think. You have something to compare. It We're to. all painting a picture on a canvas. <laughs> <laughs> With a hook. <laughs> well, I think it's because metaphors and analogies are, are kind of right in the same arena. And people just figure th- things out faster if you can use an analogy. Um, I mean, I list on my LinkedIn thing and then I'm a board certified analogist because I use analogies all the time and everything. It's just the simplest way to get a point across quickly and effectively. And if you can put some creativity into it, then you make it memorable. And that's always what you're going for. I, I agree. And I actually can think of an example that wasn't a uh, corporate video, but it could have been. And that's um, at Chapman university, uh, when President Doty was running the economic forecast for the county and the, and the country, he would talk about the economy and he would have PVC pipe and people could understand PVC pipe. They couldn't understand the economy. So I think that's one reason to use it in a corporate video if it's you know, a concept that most people aren't gonna get without something else. Makes sense. Um, what is the difference between exaggeration and dramatization? This portion of the questioning just seems like a quiz in English. <laughs> I promise that's not what it is. This is truly just to get your opinions. Um, no. We're going to get our degree uh, taken away. Can, can I use a metaphor? <laughs> yeah, you can use a metaphor to answer. Uh, when I think of that, I think of the day the earth stood still and Independence Day. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Day the Day the Earth is still is really a, a dramatization where where Independence Day is very over the top and exaggerated. So that's the best I got. Okay. Which would you rather watch right now, though? Day the Earth is still. Oh, yeah. I love Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't have Will Smith in it, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is that. Yeah. It's not the Millennium. <laughs> that's right. Well, we can move on to a question that isn't a quiz question. This is the question that no matter which topic or, you know, um, industry we talk about, everybody always wants to know this is, you know, how do you decide what to charge for your services? Uh, I have a rate and I always (laughs) add a little to it. (laughs) If I think, uh, uh, there's other factors like difficulty of, of, uh, of the client. Um, honestly, it's easier for, it's cheaper for the client if they're specific and they know what they want. If they're vague, I always up it because I know there's going to be a lot more work for me to pull strings and figure out what exactly are we making here. So I have a rate and then I adjust it up and down based on the complexity of the project. And that's just basic. I have, to, I have to point something out that if you look at Mike Kirby and Corbin Peters, they look so yeah, they could be related. They're right next to each other on my screen. That's funny. <laughs> I was noticing that, that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Corbin just so that is, that's a picture of Blake right there. That, yeah, it's Blake. Yeah, that is Blake. Yeah, that is Blake. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else want to jump on the um, charging for services or how you run things or any piece of advice for people who are getting into this and might want to just if you're just getting into it 
Yeah. You have to uh, bring something to the table to show them uh, as far as what you're, what you're worth and what you can do. But part of it is what they want. That's going to determine some of the budget and how much time is going to be involved. But as you do more, more productions, you hopefully get better and you up your rate. So that's the, wherever you're, you are at at the moment, that's what, you know, that's what I think you should charge. If you can really give them something stunning, charge, charge to the ceiling. So I think freelance is so tough because anybody can pretty much charge whatever they want. Uh, and I don't mean that like, like they can charge too much, but like they can charge as little as they want as well uh, because they just don't know. Um, and like, I've run into that where like I've, I've, given a quote and they're like oh the last guy did it for this i'm like well okay. oh, yeah. like, do you want to pay me <laughs> um i recently um found a document that um and this wasn't for freelance it was for for uh, salary positions but all in, in creative field uh and it was it's the most helpful thing i've ever seen because it says like the averages of each state um, of what mm. people are charging for, um, you know, digital producer or um, art director or, or like ev everything in like the marketing uh, creative world. And uh, I had never actually seen those figures before. And so now I know like if I'm, because I've been uh, applying for jobs as we all have, I'm sure. Um, and like, I hate that question. How, how much are you, are you um, expecting? And I, I'm like, I, I'll give you a number, but I don't know if that's the correct number. I don't know. Um, and now I know. Now I know what, and it's it's broken down by state too. So I can see like, this is this is awesome. I would rather know what everybody else is getting paid than not know at all. It's an interesting thing. Uh, from my perspective, usually it comes, that comes after the budget. You know, if, they, if it's state, just hypothetically, a fifty thousand dollar project, uh, and yeah, our directors wants a pop of that. I want a pop of that, but and you know the budget dictates two things. It dictates how elaborate the production can be, but it also dictates to me how how much time I can invest in it before you know I'm not really making anything on it. So it kind of but to. Terry's point, it's kind of interesting. When you're first starting out, you charge probably less than you do once you get experience. But the beautiful thing is that it hits a sweet spot that today it takes me so much less time to do mm. what it used to take twice as long or three times as long before. Right. So I can price things pretty well according to the budget of the production and knowing I'll still be profitable on it. Now, will I be making a base rate of you know 90 to to $100 that, you know, when I average out my time over a year, I'm, these days I'm kind of happy if I hit that point on things. But you might, you might not. And also the other factor in it is, is this going to be repeat business? Right. So uh, I, might, I might shoot a little lower to give more money to production, thinking, yeah, great, because in six months we're going to do another, in six months we're going to do another. So then you got the scale of things to help offset anything that you're really cutting yourself down on. Great point. All right. Well, we're going to jump to some audience questions now. Um, we have one from Justin. Hey, Justin. Do you have a, a strategic trick or idea that you always use as a bailout or go-to? Is there something that has saved you a number of times? Good question. Hmm. For me, every production is different. And so each time it's going to be a unique thing. So um, I guess the thing that saves me is keeping a cool head when anything is going on that is out of the ordinary. That's, uh, but everything is different and every production takes a different um, viewpoint and energy. So just be, as uh, was, it, I can't remember who, because we've all changed positions on my screen. <laughs> so I, I can't remember who said this, but you, you had said be flexible. And I think that's, that's real important. Was that you, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're back in that same position now. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, Bill Bernbach, used, uh, Doyle Dane Bernbach, you know, the great 60s ad agency, he used to carry around a piece of paper in his pocket and occasionally, you know, because they were a pretty cutting edge uh, creative agency at the time. So they were selling ideas that some people had never seen before. But this was a great thing. He had a piece of paper in his pocket. He'd pull it out, especially when things got difficult. And all he said on it is, maybe he's right. Now, it's <laughs> a bit misogynist today. Should Maybe they're right or maybe she's right. But anyway, the whole point is, I think like you're talking about, Terry, it's, you know, when you get in that position, and I, I hope that's what the question is about, maybe, or maybe it's in the creative process, a go-to thing, where, you know, like an ending where you go, that's all folks, and you do a Looney Tunes right. thing. <laughs> but... Um, it's just basically just trying to keep keep calm. You know, there's never any pro- my attitude. There's never a problem. There's always a solution. So, how can we get there easy and fast and make everybody happy? You know. Right. Yeah, I don't know if this this actually answers the question or if this was what was asked, but um, I always still use notepads um, to write notes first, and like then I can structure it and and go off of there. Uh, I don't know if other people always do that or not, but, uh, I, I can't just use my computer to write. Like I need, I need something next to me that I can look at. Um, if it's just about a go-to like gag, um, funny names. (laughs) Let's start with K. (laughs) Uh, for yeah. me, my, my little trip, uh, my little trip, my, my trick or tip would be if you're writing about a subject or your project is something you're not familiar with, just go to YouTube and see what other people have done. And that will kind of provide you uh, <clears throat> at least a starting point for your own ideas. So it's, it's okay to get inspired by other, other, other artists, other writers. For sure. Mm-hmm. And that's good. That's good advice. My next question um, from an anonymous attendee. What resource um, is good for rate checking? Is Glassdoor a good one? Do they cover freelance? Huh. The one that I the one that I found that wasn't for freelance. Uh, hold on, I have it on on my uh, onward uh, salary guide was the thing that I found, which is is just for salaries, um, and it, it it's like. It was updated for 2020, so. Onward Salary Guide was. Yeah, I think it's from on maybe onward.com or, okay. yeah. Okay, very cool. Awesome. But I don't know about freelance, yeah. Um, is there a source for example scripts that a novice can look up, can look up online? Well, just look at commercials that you like. And you exactly. can actually write, that, write them out so you can see the text and then you can compare the ones that you like with what style maybe that you would like to do. So just look at what you like and, and write it out. That's, that's a great technique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is from Karen. Any tips for working with non-actors and doing testimonial videos? For example, trying to recruit new employees to your firm. Well, the director's job, I think. Yeah, that's yes. that's more directing and producing, but uh, I've done a lot of that, and it's it's mostly just making them comfortable. Um, you can have a list of of questions that you're asking them, but then, um, like, if something piques your interest in something that they said, asking them about that, which may throw them off a little, and and usually that's when you get better stuff than when it's just the the stuff that they always say or the stuff from their website or something like that like you want to actually get the real them and not just reading from a script especially if if they're Mm non-actors right i've I've found that um talking to them and getting them to talk about their life before we start rolling just get them and then they start something they're really interested in or something that's personal that they just veer off into that tends to do that creates a little bit of a trust bond. And then all of a sudden they're a little bit more relaxed and more comfortable. That seems to work for the most part. Awesome. Well, we don't have any more questions in the chat box. Um, We have a few more moments before we're going to log off, but I just want to say thank you guys so much. This has been a really, really fun panel. I've 
thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, it's been a lot of good conversation, great answers, and a lot of laughs. I just want you guys to each take a moment to go around. I know we're all in different boxes, but just um, say your name and maybe your social handle, like your Instagram or website, your website, just to kind of promote yourselves to everybody here. Wow. Mike, we can start with you. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm Mike Kirby. Um, this is really enjoyable. Thanks for listening to me yak. Uh, if you're interested in seeing work that I've done, even though I haven't updated in some time, uh, my website is kirbycreative.com. Great. Scott? Uh, I'm Scott Davis. Uh, I just created a new website, mrscottdavis.com. That's mrscottdavis.com. Um, and on there, I also just made a video um, like I said, I'm, I'm applying for jobs. So I decided to make a video, basically like a cover letter video type thing. Um, and uh, that's on there that people can watch. And I'm also on social media. Everything is Mr. Scott Davis on everything. So. And Very you can see cool. pictures of my dog. Yay, it's yeah. International Dog Day, guys. Just for oh, that's right, yeah. Um, my dog is my everything. So yeah, yeah. it's an important day. Let's so see your dog. dog. Where's your dog? Don't let her in the room. She might oh. um, Terry, why don't you say your handle and your name? Let me see if my dog's outside my door. All right. Terry Marie and uh, my company's Real Mountain Pictures. That's real like film, real, R-E-E-L. And you can see uh, some of the things I've done on there. I've also written books and some music, but mostly focused on films and documentaries, lots of them. Very cool. Willie? Um, I'm going to do what uh, Richard DePasso says here and to put your info in the chat. Nice. Uh, maybe I'll, everyone can do and that. And you all can do that too. You can throw your info in the chat. There's my website. It's uh, penyamediagroup.com. Um, I have a blog on there and just kind of like who I've worked with before. I don't have a whole lot of content because I'm generally too busy. Uh, kind of like the cobbler has no shoes type of a deal. I don't build my own stuff. I build stuff for other people. But uh yeah, you can find me there. Great. John? Uh, I'm John Kelly, and uh, my website is jkellyworks.com. That's K-E-L-L-Y. And I've got, I've got a lot of script work on there and, and, and the subsequent videos and things like that. I just want to say um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I learned a lot today. Uh, you guys are all great. So thank you for the opportunity. Well, this was super fun. And again, everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Sarah Marins. This is my dog. She wasn't outside my door, but she's uh, my dog. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her name's Honey. Um, but maybe she'll join us next time. But um, thank you. I'm at sarahmarins.com and I will see you guys on the next crew talk. And you can find these videos on YouTube. So make sure to check out the YouTube uh, channel and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. You might be looking at Shoot Stop video and thinking, so how does this all work? Is this about A, setting up the whole crew for me, B, just giving me options and having me handle it, or C, something in between? Well, it's D, all of the above. To put it simply, we're here to help you in any way that we can to get the crew and talent you need for your next production. We believe that every level of video production can benefit from a well-maintained list of qualified crew members for every position. This goes for pre-pro, on set, and for post. Every project is different. So if you need a producer to help manage the decision-making process, then we can totally do that. If you're already a producer and want to build your own crew from scratch, then go for it. We're here to make your next production a success. And if you are crew or talent looking for producers that want you, then you've come to the right place. Sign up now and also leave a referral for any solid people that you know that are already on here. Thank you for considering ShootStop Video and happy shooting.